This is David Spears, civil engineering instructor at Texas Tech University, talking about CE 3303 solids, reviewing uh, exam number two. Uh, start at the, at the end of the test. We had problem number 12 was a shear strain problem. We gave you a plate, started out with right angles, 300 by 400 millimeters. After the shear stress was applied to it, the shear strain was measured by these uh, the, the change in the angles, which is what shear strain is. Uh, this corner moved over 5 millimeters and this corner moved up 5 millimeters. So remember that shear strain is just the change in that angle. Start off with a everything measured in radians, pi over 2, and we get a new angle, theta prime. Remember that a smaller new angle theta prime equals positive shear strain. We're going to also use the small angle theory where in radians, especially the sine of an angle that's very small is approximately equal to the tangent of the angle, which is approximately equal to the angle itself when measured in radians. So it's real easy. Both of these angles make the final angle smaller so it's positive shear strain so both of them are positive. 5 over 300 plus 5 over 400 gives us the answer 0.0292 radians. Number 13 was a uh, thermal stress, thermal temperature change um, problem. We were given that we had a rigid pipe ADC supported by a pin at A and a A36 steel guy wire BD in this case was five feet long. The properties of the wire we gave to you, not all of which you need, are E is 29,000 KSI, alpha is 6.6 10 to the minus 6, which is a strain per degree Fahrenheit. The diameter of the wire was given 0.375, and then you were told that the wire was tightened into this initial position at 25 degrees temperature. The find was to find the vertical deflection out here at point C, delta C, at the end of the pipe when the temperature is raised to 130 degrees. So the solution is to see how much that wire lengthens and for all that, for that all we need is this simple formula deflection or elongation change in length is equal to alpha times the change in temperature delta T times its length. We don't need to know about E and we don't need to know about the diameter. So run the numbers 6.6 .6, 10 to the minus 6. Temperature change was from start off at 25 went to 130 so it's 130 minus 25. The length of it I put in inches 5 times 12 works out to be 0 0.04158 inches down. That wire gets longer when it gets warmer, so it deflects down. Then by similar triangles, I've got really an 8 foot long pipe. At the 5 foot point, it's hinged here. It deflects that distance that I just calculated. So at the end, 8 feet from the pin, it deflects a similar amount similar triangles. Delta D over 5 is equal to delta C, what we want to know, at 8. So just rearrange that, plug in the numbers, I get that the deflection at C was 0 0.0665 inches down. The last problem was a biaxial bending problem. Two questions on each test, so I've done all three of them here. I was given that this beam of this dimension, 32 by 12, had a moment of inertia about the z-axis, which was shown in that way, 32,768 inches to the fourth I, moment of inertia about the y-axis, this vertical axis, through the centroid is 4608 inches to the fourth. You were asked to find the bending stress at two of these three points, point A, point B, or point C. And so you can use Hibbler and follow that sign convention, which this kind of didn't agree with, showing Z positive to the right. 
but what I encourage you to look at is compression and tension, tension and compression. And so the stress biaxial bending due to two different moments about these principal axes, MZ and MY, is really plus or minus MZ times the Y distance from the neutral axis divided by the moment of inertia about the Z axis plus or minus with respect to compression or tension MY Z over IY. So let's look at this for a second. If we're talking about MZ, it's rotating over the Z axis so it's creating compression in the top, tension in the bottom. And so I've written these little letters up here, compression in the top, tension in the bottom. That's consistent with, that happens to be consistent with uh, Hibbler's sign convention. Positive moment creates positive, uh, creates compression or negative stress in the top, tension in the bottom. But you got to then look at what direction Z is for this part of the formula. So it's better to think about just compression and tension. Similarly, what direction, what does the moment Y about the Y axis create? It creates, it's technically negative moment about the Y axis, but instead of getting caught up in that confusion, think about the fact that it's pushing, it's creating compression on this side of the neutral axis, the vertical neutral axis, and it's creating tension on this side, it's pulling away from this side, pushing into that side. So I've written C and T out here for the moment about the y-axis. Now I've got my compression and tension considerations all lined out. I'm ready to just plug and chug into the formula. At point A up here in this upper left hand corner, the moment about the z-axis is this 80 kip feet and I've converted it with 80 times 12 to convert it into kip inches. My y-distance is 16 inches from the neutral axis, the neutral z axis, divided by I z 32768. Key thing is that's compression. Moment about the z axis, everything above the neutral axis from this direction moment is compression. So I've written a little c out here. But it's plus or minus until I look at it. Moment about the y axis is this 20 kip feet times 12 inches per foot times the z distance of 6 inches to point A from the neutral axis, vertical neutral axis to point A divided by IY 4608. Remember that IY, everything over here on the left side is compression so that's also compression. So I calculate those numbers out. The MZ component is this 4, 0.4688 KSI the MY component is this 0.3125. They're both compression, so I just add them up, and I get 0.781 KSI compression. Of course, 781 PSI. Okay, similarly at point B, it lies on the Y axis, so the moment about the Y axis, that's the neutral axis for the Y bending, so I get zero for MY contribution to the stress at that point. All I have is the MZ. My Y distance is still the same as it was up here for point A. So it's just this number. Remember the zero is the Y moment about the Y axis stress. So it's just 0.469 KSI. It's compression because once again it's on the top part of the above the z-axis. At point C, over here on the side, it's on the neutral axis for z-bending, mz. So mz component goes to zero. And all I've got is the, in this case, tension on the right side of the neutral axis for y-bending, my. So I've just got 20 times 12 times 6, the same z-distance of 6 same number as this. It's tension, so I just report that as 0.313 KSI tension. 